physics online. Um, here's where we're going to be for the foreseeable future. Um, this is a plant. I got it from the library. Miss Barry thinks that I can keep it alive. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Um, the plant did not come with a name. I'm considering naming it. So if anybody has really good suggestions uh, for the name of, the, of our plant, I, I think that it's going to really belong to all of us. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to try to do. I'm going to try and teach you some stuff. You're going to try and learn some stuff. Um, we're going to get through this. We will not get to do all the things that we would have done in the normal school year. Um, there are topics that I've cut out of our lessons uh, because I kind of just want us to, to pare it down to the essentials. Um, which parts do I think are the most important for you to know? Um, in the beginning, I'm hoping you're going to have lots of time and you're going to devote the time to this. As we go forward, I still hope that you will try to make this a priority, but life happens and we don't know where this is going to lead. So here's where we're going to go. Uh, if you do not already have out paper and pencil, if you do not already have out something to write on and something to write with, you should pause and get something. If you don't have a pen or a pencil, you cannot go to my gray cabinet and get one. But I'm hoping that there's one somewhere in your house that you can use. You're going to have to take a viewing quiz at the end of this, um, which you're going to get some points for. So you want to have written some stuff down. It's not like you can't rewind and watch the video again later. Um, but, you know, take the notes. All right. So our next topic is light. We are still talking about waves. We talked about mechanical waves, like the wave in the spring that we shook in the hall. We talked about sound waves that travel through air. And now we're going to talk about light. Light is a wave. Light is a transverse wave. A transverse wave is one where the disruption in the medium or the disruption of the wave is perpendicular to the direction of the wave's transport. The, the way um, a wave, light wave moves is weird. Light waves are also called electromagnetic radiation. Or EMR for short. They are an oscillating electric and magnetic field. The electric field oscillates in one direction, the magnetic field operates, uh, oscillates perpendicular to it, and both of those oscillations are perpendicular to the motion of the wave, so it's this whole like weird dance move thing that happens when light moves through whatever it moves through. Here's another weird thing about light. One thing that we talked about with all of the other waves that we studied was the medium the light was moving through. Light can move through a medium. We'll see later that light can move through liquids, light can move through solids, light can move through gases, but light can also move without a medium. Um, the best example for this is that right now, well, not right now, I'm recording this at night, but probably while you're watching this, there's sunlight outside. That sunlight is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It arrives to us from the sun, and between us and the sun is a whole bunch of nothing. So no medium is actually required for electromagnetic radiation to transfer, or electromagnetic waves, which is good and weird. One thing, that, the next thing about waves that we want to talk about is the variables that we're going to use to describe them. We will use the same, basically the same variables that we use to describe other waves. Light is going to have a wavelength. I've got two waves on the board here, a red wave and a blue wave. Both of them have a wavelength. The wavelength will, as always, be the peak-to-peak -peak distance for the wave. The red wave that I have drawn up here has a longer wavelength than the blue wave. You can remember that for later. Waves are going to be moving. Light waves move just like other waves move. When we think about the movement of a wave, we think about how fast it's moving. For most waves, the speed of a wave is equal to the wavelength of the wave times the frequency of the wave. That's not a new equation. We use it for mechanical waves and we use it for sound waves. But light's got to be a little different. The speed of light, it turns out, is really special and really important. So much so that it gets its own symbol. That symbol is the letter C. And for all kinds of light, as long as they're moving through a vacuum, the speed of light is the same. C is equal to 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. How fast is that? Really, really fast. In fact, it is the universe's speed limit to the best that we can tell. We'll talk more about the implications of that at the very, very end of the semester after we've come back together in person. For right now, it's just going to be a big number whose value I'm always going to give you. So the speed of light is equal to the wavelength of the light. We still use lambda for that symbol. It's times the frequency of the light, but light's got to be weird. So rather than using F for the symbol for frequency, we're going to use the Greek letter nu. 
The recolor do looks sort of like a wavy V. So there we go. This frequency is measured in the same units. It's still going to be measured in whatever seconds, seconds to the negative one or hertz. Um, there we go. <clears throat> the wavelengths of waves can be really, 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 really short. For example, visible light, and we'll talk about the parts of the spectrum in just a few minutes. Visible light can have a wavelength of, let's say, 520 nanometers. So, let's solve a problem. What is the frequency of light that has a wavelength of 520 nanometers? To do that, we're going to use the equation we just wrote up there. We have to do some pretty simple algebra to rearrange that equation. If we're solving for nu, wavelength is going to be equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. The speed of light we just wrote down is 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We'll divide that by the wavelength. But can we just put 520 nanometers in the denominator? I'm hoping you all just said no. Because I've written all my units up here, you can see that the nanometers wouldn't cancel the meters. We're going to first have to change our nanometers into meters. So let's do just a little dimensional analysis here. The unit we're trying to get rid of is nanometers. It goes on the bottom. The unit we're turning it into is meters, which goes on top. Which one is bigger, a meter or a nanometer? The meter is bigger. In one meter, we have 10 to the ninth nanometers. If you didn't have that SI prefix in your head, well, you got it now. So we're going to end up with, I'm going to write this a little bit strangely, but I think you can handle it. I'm just going to call this 520 times 10 to the negative ninth meters down here on the bottom. Now, to solve this, we're going to put it in the calculator. Be careful when you're dividing by a number with a scientific notation. You're either going to have to put parentheses around the whole thing, or you're going to have to use that EXP button. 2.998 times 10 to the 8th divided by, I'm just putting in 520 times 10 to the minus 9th. And that gives me a frequency which is going to seem impossible. The frequency it gives me is 5.76765. Times 10 to the 14th hertz. If that number feels like a ridiculously large number, it should. It's also the correct answer. Um, so despite how large that is, so when you get frequency values that are improbably high, yeah, that's that's actually how high it is. Think about how short 520 nanometers is. Think about how fast 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second is, and that's not an unreasonable frequency. When it comes to solving problems quantitatively. We're going to use this new equation, which isn't really new, and then velocity is equal to distance over time, just like we did with sound waves and echoes. All right, so hopefully that's got what you need for this. Now let's talk about the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. While I'm racing, you can think of names of electromagnetic waves that you know. I could cut this out, but I'm probably not going to. You're probably just going to watch me erase things from time to time. It's okay, you can make sure your notes are all cut up. It's going to be fun. You know what, I'm going to switch to purple just for fun. <coughs> all right. Types of electromagnetic radiation. We're going to start with visible light. When I just say the word light, you think of visible light. When you think about the types of visible light, you think about their colors, and you're going to think about Roy G. Biv. There are other kinds of electromagnetic radiation. You might have already thought of infrared. Infrared radiation is also known as heat. You might have thought of microwaves. You might have thought of radio waves. Maybe you thought about ultraviolet radiation. You know that you should watch out for ultraviolet radiation, but you should wear sunscreen when you go outside, which you should do. You should go outside sometimes these days and get some fresh air. Being inside staring at the computer all day is no good for you. You might have thought of x-rays, and you might have thought of gamma rays. Gamma rays do not give you 
superpowers, gamma rays give you cancer. Everything that gives you superpowers in the comic books gives you cancer in real life. This is just what I have to share with you. All right, I wrote these in an order when I put them up on the board. I wrote these in a specific order for a specific region, reason. This is the electromagnetic spectrum or range in, in the case of how I have it on my board from low energy to high energy. secret question in the middle of each of the lessons um, so that you actually have to watch the lessons even if you think you already know all the stuff we're going to say. So today's secret question is, tell me your favorite animal. Tell me your favorite animal. All right, back to our uh, electromagnetic spectrum. It goes from low energy to high energy, which you should have known because how do we define the energies? What, how do we define energy in this class? We define energy in terms of Energy in terms of its ability to hurt you. Um, I already said that gamma rays will give you cancer instead of superpowers. Radio waves do not cause any danger to you. So high energy spectrum, energy into the spectrum is on that end. Low energy is on this end. If we think about the two waves that I had drawn on the board before, if you think about the long wavelength wave and the short wavelength wave, which of those appears to require more energy to draw? The short wavelength wave? That's correct. So the high energy end of the spectrum is also the short wavelength, which means the low energy end of the spectrum is the long wavelength. The wavelength of a wave is inversely related to its frequency. So the short wavelength waves are high frequency waves. And the long wavelength waves are low frequency waves. So with this spectrum and these definitions, we can relate the energies of waves, the wavelengths of waves, and the frequencies of different kinds of waves based on where they are on the electromagnetic spectrum. There's an equation that relates the energy and the wavelength, or the energy and the frequency of a wave, but I'm not sure. I'll tell you what, I'll write it on the board, but you're not going to use it to solve an equation. E is equal to H times nu where H is Planck's constant. All that really matters as far as this equation is concerned is that as energy increases, so does frequency. And if frequency decreases, so does energy. And um, I think that's about all we need for today. I think that's going to get you through the very beginnings of your UT Quest assignment. It's going to be enough for you to solve the concept builder. Um, so look at your Google Classroom to see what assignments you're going to need to do for the next little bit. Go and find your viewing quiz, and I will see you later.